So here we are again, Days Cars, doing the thing that no business should ever be doing. This is a product that I make and sell, and what am I going to do? I'm going to show you how to make it. That's right, once again, I am printing the recipe on the menu. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So this is an Autolite 4100, arguably one of the best carburetors that ever came from the factory from Ford. Guys are putting these on all kinds of carbureted engines. The important thing to know with an Autolite 4100 is really they came in two, yeah, they came in a ton of varieties, but there are two main castings. You have this one stamped on the side that says 1.12, and you have the ones that say 1.08. And the 1.12 carburetors are almost always for a big block, and the 1.08 carburetors are small block carburetors. Now those numbers stand for the size of the openings in the Venturi. What you want is a smaller Venturi for a smaller engine that's not going to draw as much air. And you want the bigger Venturi for bigger engines that are going to draw more air. So can I take and bolt this up to a small block? You sure can. Can I tune it and get it to work properly? Yes, you can do those things. You can modify the boosters down inside. You can change out the jets. And you can get these to function fairly well on a small block. The biggest issue is idle. Like when you first hit it from idle, it'll tend to stumble because it opens faster than the carburetor can adjust to the displacement of air going through it. If only there was a way to make a 1.12 carburetor function like a 1.08 carburetor when it comes to stumbling off of idle and throttle response. But wait, there is. I'm going to show you in this video how to make these copper inserts that take the bore of the carburetor from 1.12 down to closer to one inch, which will make this carburetor function extremely well on a small block once you've done the other tuning things. So this is the raw material for these inserts. This is just simple one inch copper tubing like you can get at any hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace. And this is what we're gonna end up making our inserts out of. Now, there's a couple of challenges involved with working with copper. So the biggest issue is it's really soft. And so that means we can't just cut it with a saw without deforming it. And that also limits our ability to use power tools to make this. So this will pretty much be made by hand. So this is the first issue. The edge left by the pipe cutter is not flat and it's not always square. And the most important thing is that we have one side of each of these blanks that is perfectly perpendicular to the side. So I'm gonna have to square this up on the belt sander. As you can see, that's a lot cleaner. It's a nice flat edge and it is truly perpendicular to the side of the pipe. So once I have the end squared, we need to clean up this inner edge here. And I do that with a half round file. And I just go in and work it, just cleaning up the lip and uh, opening this up just a little bit. All right, so I've gone in and cleaned up this inside edge and gotten any lip or burr that was left over from the pipe cutter and then the bench sander and removed that. Now you would think that we could just come in here with a pipe cutter and lop off three eighths of an inch of material on each side. The problem that I've run into over the years, especially when you're working so close to the end of the pipe, is we're not utilizing all of the surface space on this. And so it's really easy to get things cocked ever so slightly and then have the blade wander. 
So not only do we not end up with a square cut, but the blade actually begins to mark the copper as if you were threading it. So this is my solution. First, we have to mark this at 3 8 and this, where we're making the cut, needs to be perfectly parallel to this. Enter one of my favorite tools in the shop, masking tape. I use masking tape all the time. This masking tape is exactly 3 8 of an inch wide. So, if we go ahead and line that up and work our way around, we now have a nice edge to start our cutting process on. And of course, to do the same thing to the other side. So by adding masking tape to both ends, we've now made this even harder to use. It's not gonna easily roll over this and the extra thickness of the tape is gonna cause problems. Enter a needle file. And what's nice about this file is it only files on one side. So this flat side here files, but these two angled sides are just smooth steel. And what that allows you to do is put it right up against the edge of the tape. You can feel the edge of the tape. And we can cut in a groove that this blade can now ride in and get a perfect cut every time. So I always start where the tape has the rip mark so that I know laps, and I always go two laps around. There's one, and there's two. Let's double check that, that looks pretty good. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Once we have the groove cut, we can go back in and remove the tape. And I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but we now have a groove all the way around. So now I can put the blade of my cutter into the groove. I found that even with that groove, especially since this particular piece of pipe is slightly out of round, don't worry, we'll address that in a little bit, it still tends to wander. So for at least the first couple of laps on this, I don't put a lot of pressure on it and I actually spin the pipe rather than the cutter. And we just slowly work our way around until we have a little bit better groove cut to where then I can use the cutter as designed. Add a little more tension. There we go, now we're starting to get somewhere. For best results, you don't wanna just crank this down and go. You wanna take a nice, slow cut. You'll end up with a cleaner edge and you'll end up with a better insert overall. All right, there's one. Let's get the other one cut. And there is blank number two. Now I need to go in and clean up the lip. Now I don't care if this is perfectly perpendicular to the side because everything is gonna be referenced off of the side that we machined on the belt sander. This side will be evened up as we flute it out. All I'm doing right here with the file is just removing the lip on the inside. Now, in theory, when I put this in the press and press it, that is going to kind of fold over, but I found that it left little weird marks and it wasn't as clean if I did it that way. So I always take a few minutes and clean up the inside of this with the file. Now, as I'm going along, I always put my finger in there and check for a lip. And in a few spots, I do still have one. There we go, that's better. A little bit of a lip there. Again, this side we're just roughing out because everything is based on the other side where we did the machining. Machining. Those are totally ready to go. We're gonna take these blanks over to the press and press them into the lovely bell shape that is required for the carburetor. So we're at the press and this is where the magic happens. And also, 
These steps were the things that took me the most trial and error. I probably blew through 20 blanks before I finally had it down to a system that I really liked and that was consistent and worked well. The pieces of our die are a washer. This washer is used because the top piece, the, the ball bearing that we're gonna use to make the flute, actually goes down below the level of the copper blank. And so you have to have something with a hole in the middle so that it sits properly. We have a smaller washer that fits inside the blank for the first round of pressing. Now, this is one of the things that I discovered. Each blank is going to be pressed twice. We do a little bit, and then we remove this washer and we finish it out. I found that if I did it all in one shot, it didn't always come out even. This is basically my die that goes on the inside. This is the exact inner diameter of the copper blank, and it's about an eighth inch thick, uh, maybe just a little bit less. And then the inner edge here has been rounded off so that it does not interfere with the ball bearing. Which brings me to the last piece, and this is the main piece to get these nice flutes. And that's this ball bearing right there. It's hardened steel, and it's an inch and a half, absolutely perfect for this application and because of it being hardened steel it really doesn't deform under the pressure of the press even after repeated usage let's press one of these now the first thing we got to do is we need to look at our blank and figure out which end we had on the belt sander to be flat and that's this side so that's the side that's going to go down so the way this works i always take and put my inner die in, and I don't even put it in straight. I found out over the years that because it's basically the same size as the ID, and again, because this pipe is slightly out of round, it was always hard to get it in there. It would come right out after we were done making the flute, but it never worked the way I wanted it to to push it in ahead of time. But you really don't need to because the action of the press is gonna get it into place. So I've just got it with the beveled edge up. We've got our washer. We're gonna set this over the top. We're gonna to put our ball bearing there. And we're gonna slowly and gently go down. Now, if you look at that, there's actually a little bit of a gap because this is not sitting square on that. But as soon as we start to put pressure, it's gonna kind of roll over and everything is gonna be lined up properly. And you can see, there it goes. So now we're sitting square. We continue the pressing process and it's beginning to flute out. As soon as I feel a little resistance, that means we have bottomed out and we can relieve the pressure. Now we slide it out. We lift off of the spacer washer. Now my die is still up in there and we put it on the washer that allows this round edge of the ball to go into the middle past the edge of the copper insert. And again, once we feel uh, tension, we stop. Now here we have the die in the nicely fluted copper insert and if we push, it just pops right out. And we have a nice insert that has a nice flute all the way around. All right, let's do the other one. And just like the first one, that one came out exactly the way it needed to. Let's do a little more fine tuning on this and we should have that ready to install. Before I do any more work on these, I always check the fit. Now, I took this over to my deburring wheel and really lightly and quickly went around the edge. When we use the bench sander to square this off, it does leave the tiniest little lip. And so by hitting it with the deburring wheel, it uh, cleans it up and usually gives me a real nice fit. Now the reason I'm checking the fit now before I do any more work on these is I don't wanna waste my time. Sometimes in the process, something won't quite go right. You'll have a little imperfection in the copper tubing that'll cause it to flare 
in an odd way or things like that. And so I wanna make sure that these fit before I put any more work into them. So we're just gonna drop it down into the, the bore there and push, and that one seems to be nice and tight. And we'll push this one in, and there we have it. Those are nicely secured into the bore. They're a slight press fit, so you don't have to glue them or anything like that. And see, they're not gonna come out. So we'll get our thumb in here and we'll pop them loose and we will finish the fabrication process. So again, this edge is the edge that was cut with the pipe cutter and it's a little bit rough. It's not consistent all the way around and it's actually a little bit sharp because what was the inner edge of the pipe is now the top edge. So the last step in the process is to take a large file and to file them smooth. I spin it with my hand as I'm working it back and forth. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure. I'm just slowly working the edge flat. It's interesting, as the edge gets flatter, the copper doesn't grab as hard because you're not up against a sharp edge. And so you can kind of tell by feel when you're getting close. And if you look, you can see there's now a nice flat edge. Now I like my edge to be a little bit bigger than that, so I'm gonna go a little further. The last step is just to simply polish them up, clean them up a little bit. And I like to use a Scotch-Brite pad. So I just go in here and work the edges, just cleaning them up, getting them a little bit smoother. And so that they look consistent. There we have it. Two copper inserts ready to install on an Autolite 4100 1.12 big block carburetor. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.